you know, my life's an open book. I've never really hidden anything. Everything is all out there in the open. In fact, I think I'm one of the most boring people. I don't think they'll ever call me for Big Boss or anything. I think once an actor, always an actor. So no matter what I'm doing right now or otherwise. But relatively, uh, I think when you're destined to get something, when you're at the right place at the right time, I think somehow that works out. Hello everyone, welcome to the Success Stories Season 2, a talk show presented by Trident Communication in association with World Humanitarian Foundation. I'm Sneha, your host for today, and our guest today is Navina Bole. Navina, she's an Indian television actress, and she played the roles in Jini and Juju, Mile Jab Ham Tum, and one of my favorite show, Ishq Baz. So now we'll talk about her journey to success. Navina, a very warm welcome to our show today. And how are you doing? Thank you so much. And I'm doing uh, fabulous. Um, I am safe. I am COVID free. I have a beautiful baby at home. And I am really, really uh, superb. So life is good. God is very kind. Thank you. And I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you? And, I hope everything is perfect with you as well. Yeah, yeah. We all are doing good. Uh, luckily, we all are safe and fine. <laughs> That's true. So, Navina, like, uh, uh, everyone knows you as an actress. Like, you are acting in uh, serials and everyone knows you as a model, as an actress. But right. we will like to know, like, what are you in your real life? Okay. In my real life, I am just Navina. <laughs> You know, I am a, a very simple, home-loving person. I'm not, if you ask me whether I want to go out and party, I want to stay home and watch Netflix, I will choose uh, Netflix. And I'm a foodie. I am also a fitness enthusiast. I'm a doting mother. I'm absolutely in love with my two-year-old daughter, Kimaira. And um, I am, uh, I think I'm a good daughter. I'm a good daughter-in-law. I am also uh, an avid reader and uh, I have so many things actually, but yes, I, I think foremost I am an actor. I miss being in front of the camera and I think I am the best version of myself while I am in front of the camera portraying uh, a character that I'm not, you know, so that is something that I love doing. And uh, I think once an actor, always an actor, so no matter what I'm doing right now or otherwise, uh, I think in my heart and in my soul, I will always be an actor. Okay, yeah. great, great. Great to know you. Great. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like, how you started your journey? Like, what, what clicks you? Like, you can go to modeling or you can go for the acting. Like, what is that one thing that clicks for you to go into yeah. this field? I come from a very filmy family. Uh, not a lot of people know that, you know, I am related to the Bhats. I am related to the Darshans. It's all one big family. And uh, obviously, I wanted to do something on my own. So uh, I started off with uh, just getting my portfolio done with, you know, I collect, I saved some money with the job that I was doing. I got a folio made. I started going for auditions. And the very first audition that I went for, I got it. It was an ad for Pakistan. Uh, for Varit Telecom. So I did a lot of ads, a lot of ads. I, I must have done about 100 ads. And then I did a lot of music videos. And then in uh, 2006, I participated in Glad Rag Mega Model in Manhunt. And I was uh, the top five finalist there. So, you know, that led, that opened a lot of doors for me, modeling wise. And uh, I did a, a music video around that time. And the producer said that I was perfect for uh, Diya's role in Mili Jo Ham Tom. So, you know, I, yeah, so, you know, I had an audition and they liked me a lot. But there's a story behind that also, because I was uh, not doing anything, anything then. So I had put on a lot of weight. And they said that Diya needs to, she's the diva of the college. So she needs to be a certain, you know, we had a photo shoot and I just didn't look like Diya at that time. And they gave me a month to lose weight and to look the way I needed to look for my character. And I worked so hard on myself that they were amazed when they saw me. They're like, how did you do this? Because I had lost some 10, 15 kgs and they were like, we don't even know what you did, but this is fabulous. So um, that, there was a little story you know, behind me playing Dia. But that's how Dia started. And of course, one thing led to another. And 
uh, I think I got uh, Genie or Juju because of Dia. So, you know, the video led to Dia, Dia led to uh, Priya and, you know, so on and so forth. So that's how it's been. Okay, great. And how challenging it was for you to get that first role, to get that first breakthrough? Did you face any challenges? Uh, I think my journey has been slightly easier when I see a lot of journeys. Uh, like I said, you know, the very first audition I went for, I bought the ad. Uh, when I participated and sent my entry for Glad Rags, I got selected. I was in the top five there. And then one thing led to another and I got Milaj of Hamtum. But of course, for every hundred auditions that I give, there are just one or two that I actually get selected for. So I have seen that share of struggles. And I, you know, we used to go for auditions and there would be this line of people there and they would say that, uh, no, we take these and the people would come later and they would say, we take these people because they've come through an agency and you're waiting there for two hours. So I've seen all of that as well. But relatively, uh, I think when you're destined to get something, when you're at the right place at the right time, I think somehow that works out. And that worked out for me. So for Milija Bhamtum, I had done a music video with the producer. He remembered that, oh, I shot with Naveena and she might suit this role a lot. Then, of course, they said, oh, you have to lose weight and look a certain way if we want to cast you. Then again, I worked on myself for a month. Then I got back and then, of course, Milija Bhamtum happened and, you know, the rest was history. But uh, yeah, so that is how it came about. And there have been times when there's no work. I think all of us actors know how unpredictable this profession yeah. is. You know, you, you're you not guaranteed work. You can sign a show tomorrow and it can go off air in like a week or two. Or you can, you know, sign the contract and get everything done and then be replaced overnight. Or you can go for an audition, have everything going and then say you're not finalized because of whatever reasons. So it's very, very unpredictable. I've been through that whole jigsaw where, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm not getting work one month, two months, three months. It does get very frustrating. But uh, I think uh, in the whole scheme of things, I have been really lucky as far as roles and as far as work is concerned. I never wanted to do the typical Sas Bahu show. So I never did that. I never even got offered those roles. Because, you know, I think in TV, you tend to get typecast and I'm very happy with the typecast I got. So I, I was... No, not the vamp, but I was not the positive either. I was this glamorous in between who would keep yo-yoing between good, bad, positive, negative, and it's it's been very enjoyable. I like that, that niche that I have for myself. I love your role in Ishkbaz also. <laughs> Thank watched. you. I love that show. Yeah, I love everybody associated with that show, and uh, that was also so much fun to do. We had such a beautiful team. Uh, the best producers, the best directors, you know, Nakul, Surbhi, they've all been like absolute sweethearts to work with. You know, I can't say that there's one person on the set who, you know, gave me like a negative vibe or anything. It was just so nice. We would eat as a family, we would work together and, you know, uh, Ishwas was just so much fun. There are so many memories. Actually, every show that I talk about, it brings up this beautiful picture of memories that I have, you know, there are so many. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been beautiful. Ishbaz, in fact, I got married during Ishbaz and, you know, the whole team turned up for my wedding. So it's really memorable. And they gave me a break so I could go for my honeymoon and come back. And then they did get me back. So it was, uh, Ishbaz has just been beautiful. Yeah, people still, I just feel so uh, blessed that nobody really knows me as Naveena. People either call me Dia or they call me yeah, because you know when you're known by your character, then you know that you've done something right by the character that you play. So yeah, Ishwar has been a phenomenal journey. Yeah. It's and it opened a lot of doors for me in so many ways. I I get a lot of opportunities because I've played Tia and Ishwar. And of course, you know we had this magical team of uh, Shivani, a stylist and creative, who made us look fabulous in our characters, who all worked on our characters so much. So it, it was a beautiful journey. Lalit sir, our director, you know, he took pains to ensure that we all carried off our characters with utmost sincerity. So yeah, Ishpas was beautiful. Yeah. I can go on and on. We should like do a separate Ishpas interview. So yeah, Ishpas is a lot of fun. Yeah, great, amazing. And uh, like, uh, how does your academic qualifications help you in this acting career of yours? 
uh see academically i think all of us uh, should be sound you know at least we can do is graduate and now i think specializing in something is also really important because like i said acting is not something that is uh, predictable or it is stable yeah. you know you must have some kind of a backup something to fall back on in case this doesn't work like i right now i'm working on uh, something called uh, image management and soft skill training you know i'm trying to get that running too so that when i don't have a lot of offers i have that to fall back on you know when you get used to working and having a career you need to be doing something you can't sit and stagnate and wait for things to happen you need to make them happen so i'm a bcom graduate by qualification so obviously the initial jobs that i got were because of that and uh, even you know obviously the least that so uh, you can do is get yourself a basic education and make sure that you're at least a graduate so that is what i did and uh, i would have wanted to pursue a lot more but uh, obviously uh, you know uh, fate had different plans for me and i got into acting and modeling and then of course i couldn't do an mba but i would advise everybody out there now to specialize in something and to have uh something that they are good at and something that they are experts at so that you know you can be the specialist in your field and specialize in it and of course acting is always a passion acting is always something that you can pursue alongside doing you know doing what you need to earn your income like my husband is a ca by profession but he is also a real estate uh, you know he's got real estate he owns these low income housing societies and he's also an actor and he's done music videos and films so he balances that so i think that that's a good healthy balance to have and now with social media there are youtube channels and there's instagram so creatively i think you know the world is your oyster and you choose what you're good at and then you go ahead there and you know you do what you have to do so we have to be like one more one than one and more uh, like uh, yes in comparison Yeah, you know, I just feel education is oh, really demand. important. Make sure you have your degrees in place. Make sure you got your expertise in place. Then, of course, go live your dreams and do whatever you have to have. But make sure you got your degree there first. You know, so in case those doors are not opening, at least get this door open and work there. Meanwhile, then this door also might open. So I just feel you should have a solid educational background, which I honestly don't have. But at least you know I went and got that commerce degree that have a head degree. I can get a little decent job and I got a little bit more. So yeah. Great. So Navina, who is your biggest support throughout your journey, and like who is your inspiration? Ah, uh, wow! No one ever asked me this, yeah. But uh, if I think about, see, I'm a huge believer in Sai Baba Ji. I before every shot and everything I do, I'm like Baba Ji be with me. So I just feel. he's been so kind to me and he's just been there so baba ji is my inspiration he's been my support my mom has been my rock my husband has been my rock he is so supportive with everything that i do uh you know i i just have been very lucky because i've been surrounded by uh, positive supportive people who have supported my dreams who've been there my dad was associate director with raj kosla and he was very anti me getting into this profession but he also pushed me when i said papa i'm never going to do anything that embarrasses you ever so let me do this so he was very encouraging fine and then he would see me on screen and he would always tell me you were good you were bad or you looked good and you looked bad so him my aunt they been you know they they just watch me they take the time to sit and criticize me or to appreciate me to tell me what is wrong so i can't really give one person the credit for being my support because i think most of my uh, family and my loved ones just have been so supportive and have been such pillars during my journey that there's really not that one person that i can thank there are the list is endless and now of course my daughter yeah she just keeps me going so yeah I, there's not really one person there are so many people i think who make up your journey and who support you and who encourage you in different ways so i can't name one person <laughs> okay okay and uh, like you have told us so many uh, tv shows and so many video albums you did so many ads you did yeah. so like out of so many things which is one of your that one favorite role you have played so far okay my personal favorite that i'm really proud of is uh, i did this music video 
with uh, Radhika Rao and Vanessa Pro. It was uh, uh, for Jagjit Singh. It was called Jawab Jinka. And then there were two songs. One was for Abida Parveen and one was for Gulam Ali. And they were beautiful ghazals and beautifully short. And I think I was selected from amongst 200, 300 girls. Apparently, Anushka Sharma and me were the finalists and I got it. So I feel very proud. You know, that's like my proud moment. And uh, I love shooting for it. I love watching it. And, you know, it was something that uh, Radhika Rao saw me as someone that nobody saw me. I was this village girl who was chewing pan and, you know, all of that happened. And uh, so every time I watch that video, I'm like, this is something I am so proud to be a part of, you know. This is like beautiful cinema. It's actually like poems, those three music videos. You know how beautifully they make videos, these guys. Radhika Rao and Vinay Sapru and... Uh, yeah. I remember when we were starting shoot, Radhika Rao told me, she's like, I've made all my heroines cry. But she never made me cry. She kept appreciating me and praising me. So it was a high for me, you know, from shooting it to seeing the final outcome to even now when I watch that song, I'm like, okay, I'm really proud of this one thing that I've done. So yeah, okay. that would have to be it. Oh, great. Uh, now, you know, if you were not being an actress, uh, in which profession you would have been? Like what you have been, if not an actress? Okay, uh, I wanted to be an air hostess all my life. My uh, elder sister, she was flying for Cathay Pacific. She's now settled in the UK. And I would see her and I was like, this is what I want to do. Because, you know, she had the best lifestyle. She'd be staying at the best hotels and wearing the best clothes. And she had it all. And traveling the world and seeing the places all over. So I think I would have been an air hostess, if not for an actress. But then again, I realized I'm very scared of flying. So then that was out of the window. Uh, I also uh, think that I could have done something uh, as a social worker, which I still can do. You know, maybe a teacher or an educator, because that is something that I really enjoy doing and I get a lot of satisfaction from. So I, in fact, even uh, did the Times of India Teach India initiative, you know, where I taught spoken English to uh, not very privileged children. And uh, it was such a high. So maybe I would have been a teacher or an educator if not for an actress. Okay, great. Uh, great to know that, Navina. And like, how do you manage your personal life and professional life, like being a mother? Uh, I just feel that I do my very best in everything that I do. And when that happens, I think that balance just comes in, in you know, beautifully by itself. I don't overdo anything. And I don't uh, underdo anything. I just try and keep things uh, as they are. I make sure that they don't merge, you know, the two together. So my personal life is my personal life. is very less that I actually share about my personal life. And uh, as far as my professional life is concerned, I'm all out there. My, you know, my life's an open book. I've never really hidden anything. Everything is all out there in the open. In fact, I think I've one of the most boring people. I don't think they'll ever call me for Big Boss or anything because, you know, I, I've not really had a lot of scandals or secrets or anything. But, uh, and you have to realize that, you know, we're all humans after all. We're all doing our jobs after all and uh, just doing our jobs to the best of our abilities. So you have to remember that and not let things get to your head when you've got so many followers or you've got fans and you've got media like my uh, wedding I remember was full of media you know and uh, you just have to realize that this is part of the job that you're doing you know you're not some queen or some royalty from somewhere and they're all there they're also doing their job and uh, this is part of what you've chosen to be and know where to draw the line obviously I won't have them come with me for my honeymoon so, you know just know where to draw the line is what I would say in everything, in your personal space and in your uh, professional space. Great. Uh, like, uh, what are your hobbies other than acting, modeling? What do you love to do? I love reading. I've uh, been a reader since I was a child. I um, love uh, dancing. It just sets me free. I love working out. I'm a fitness freak. I uh, love playing with my little child now, you know, because we're in lockdown. So there are so many things that I do with her. Uh, that and uh, I love traveling. I love meeting people of different cultures, seeing different places in different countries. I love watching films. I love watching all these shows on OTT. 
and uh, right now i'm doing a lot of assignments because of the image consultant course that i'm doing so i like doing those assignments too because it involves a lot of research and uh, you know using your brain and figuring out things so um, all of that yeah basically i just think all of us should have hobbies because they keep you sane they keep you happy they are therapeutic and we should indulge in stuff that makes us happy and i make sure that i make time out and i love uh, online uh, you know playing these games also <laughs> my husband hates it because he keeps checking my screen time and he's like you're wasting so much time playing games but i just find that so so therapeutic it's just so much fun you're not thinking of anything else you know when you're doing that so yeah <laughs> these hobbies are the things which keeps us alive yes otherwise you know what is life they just keep us going they get us you get our minds off other things and you know we are only focusing on those things like when i read i am not navina bole staying in mumbai i am in that world in that character's room and doing whatever is happening there so that that's a high when you're watching a film you're not here anymore you're in the film you're watching with what's happening there and you know you're identifying with those emotions you're living that life and i think it's beautiful to get transported to that world so yeah i think that's that's nice to have hobbies like that so like even when you're dancing you know you're dancing yeah. you're not really you're just having fun you're thinking of your steps and how you're moving and you're enjoying the music you're not really stressing about other things so yeah these things just keep me happy here that's great and you know what any unforgettable moment you want to share with us and with our viewers uh unforgettable as in a, a good unforgettable or a bad unforgettable or whatever you like whatever you want like we should know our viewers should know your fans should know i had a very uh, difficult time during my pregnancy so uh, i it's just something that's so special um when i was pregnant it was very smooth i was working out and i was you know doing everything going around and uh, then in the night the before i was going to give birth to my baby i felt really ill and i was taken to the emergency ward at the hospital and uh, that is when the, the you know i was puking i was in a lot of pain i wasn't in labor but i was in a very bad shape in the worst shape that i have been in my entire entire life and uh, the doctor said that i had a condition it was called uh, eclampsia which very few people have and somehow my gy gynac had failed to detect it but that made my bp fluctuate and i had fits and they said we have to get the baby out asap otherwise neither the baby neither she have a chance of survival so they operated on me at 5 in the morning my gynac was there and you know that happened and my baby was born and they put me in a room and i got a fit again so you know it was a very traumatic time uh, you know i've touched wood i've had a very smooth life but this was like a big bump and uh, obviously i didn't know what i was going through because i was not even conscious but you know it's always your loved ones who are more aware of what is happening to you so they were very 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 worried very traumatized my baby was in nicu my baby was born purple and uh, i was unconscious for two three days and finally when i came to my senses i was in the icu ward surrounded by very sick people i didn't know what had happened and my husband comes to me and says congratulations baby we've had a baby girl and uh, i didn't know how to react and i said acha ye kab hua kya hua i don't even know so i have i didn't see my baby for the first two three days of her life i was unconscious and then finally i saw her and then of course right now she's the most precious thing in my life but you know both of us fought this battle and we came out winners and we came out victorious and uh, it's just a story i like to tell people you know life can get difficult and life can throw any kind of situation at you and uh, you just have to be strong and you've got to be positive and you've got to fight it and you have to get out of it and i think it applies to every situation in life you know if you're persistent if you have the will that yes i'm going to do this you are going to do it no matter what so and she's still very zidi you know the nurses would say she's stubborn she fought for her life because she was losing oxygen and all of that because of my eclampsia i also you know came out from somewhere so it was uh, just this is something that not a lot of people know and i uh, keep it private but this is something that i 
think I I just felt like sharing today, so I've shared it. So yeah. Very true. And Navina, what are your future plans? Like something exciting project coming in the pipeline? Like right now with the lockdown, yeah, there is. I think all the plans have been frozen so far. Yeah. Uh, future plans definitely including include being. A very very good mother to Kimaira because you know her schools and everything are starting. Future plans also include uh, getting to be a stronger influencer on Instagram because that is something I'm really enjoying right now. I want to expand into that. Also includes getting into this image consulting, and it includes doing a lot of good OTT projects because I love that field. I love watching OTT, and that is something that I want to do now. So. If something great comes along in that uh, space, I would love to experiment with that. Probably start my own YouTube channel. So yeah, there are so many things I've been uh, brainstorming. So yeah, these things are in the pipeline. So hopefully they all will come out soon. Okay, we'll love to see you on OTT also. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I hope that I get something worth my while. I would love to do it myself. Okay. Uh, so Navina, as our show uh, says, success stories. So, what is your definition of success? See, for me, being successful means uh, you know going to sleep at the end of the day with a very light heart and a clear conscience, and knowing that you have done your best and you haven't really harmed anybody or done anything wrong to anybody. And uh, being successful also means being uh, self-reliant and not. having to count on anybody or depend on anybody you know for yourself you su support yourself and you uh, maintain yourself and you pay your bills and you know not being answerable to anybody you know coming to a level where you don't have to answer to anybody and coming to also being a success means helping out to those who are not as privileged as you are and doing your bit for everybody in any way that you can so that was that is what success would be to me uh great any uh, message you want to give to our viewers and to your fans i just want to tell them that this, these are very uh, unprecedented times so please stay strong please stay aware please stay responsible you know make sure that you're you've got you've got your vaccine shot make sure you're wearing a mask don't go out unnecessarily look after your parents look after your babies look after yourself stay healthy exercise eat healthy and uh, follow your dreams yeah please never never uh, give up on your dreams if you have a dream make sure that you do everything you can to achieve that dream and trust me it will happen the universe does make it happen so that's what i would say It was amazing feeling talking to you. Same here, yeah. Same here. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you too. I wish you all the best in everything.